My name is Alex Horn. I am 26 years old. I am super excited to test myself and see what this competition does. I love challenging myself and always trying something new and just pushing my skill level. In the right moment, I'll blossom and shine. My name is Kevin Berkman. I'm 49 years old. I retired from the Army after 24 years. My first knife that I got when I was in the military, I didn't like it. It didn't fit the gear that I had, so I made my own. And then I just started from there. My name is Pat Biggin, and I'm from Elkhorn, Wisconsin. I started bladesmithing when my grandpa gave me a knife that his dad made for him during the Second World War. And I started getting interested in how that process was done. Can I still repeat it? It's just kind of a way to pay homage to my great-grandfather's work skill set and maintain the tradition through my family. My name is Mike Benton. I'm 45 years old. I have a huge family. I have six kids, four girls, and two boys. So being here, this is definitely a vacation. Yeah, yeah, my wife actually has one to come. <laughs> But uh, my family is number one to me. I love my kids. I love my wife. I mean, they're the reason why I work so much every single day. Blade Smiths, welcome to the Forge. Each of you is here to engage in three rounds of timed edge weapon making competitions specifically designed to test every aspect of your skills in front of a panel of expert judges that will tell us which of you is the next Forge and Fire champion, leaving here with a check for $10,000. Let's go ahead and meet those judges now. Up first, two-time Forge and Fire champion, Ben Abbott. Next, historic weapons recreation specialist, David Baker. And last, edged weapon specialist, Doug Markaida. Bladesmiths, today's competition revolves around barbarians, specifically the Goths who sacked Rome in 410 AD. Now, along the way, the Goths seized weapons of their adversaries and incorporated them into their own arsenals. And today, we're gonna ask you to incorporate these weapons into a billet from which you will forge one of these, a favorite of backstabbers everywhere. A Puggio dagger. It is believed that the Puggio was the weapon used by the Senate conspirators to assassinate Julius Caesar on the Ides of March 44 AD. Your challenge here in the first round is to use a Hata technique to combine three or more of these weapons to forge a Puggio that falls within the following parameters. The length of your blade must be between 8 and 10 inches. It must have a wasp waist and be at least 2 inches wide at the base. I know nothing about barbarians and very little bit about daggers. I've never made a dagger before, so I'm getting a little nervous. You will have just three hours in this first round in which to complete your work. If you make it to the second round, you will have a chance to put a handle on your Puggio, making it fully functional so that we can test it for strength and durability in a shield chop and stab and for edge retention in a rope slicer. Bladesmiths, pay attention to the details. Failure to meet a single one of our parameters is grounds for immediate dismissal from this forge with no deliberation. Good luck, Bladesmiths. Your three hours starts now. All right, so these guys have to combine those steels into a Hada Damascus billet. Hada technique is really just layering of the same types of steel, right? It's a really ancient technique of using up scraps. We've got our smiths kind of disassembling some knives. Why aren't these guys just cutting off like shafts and blades and stacking that stuff up? Because it's more fun hitting things with hammers. Yeah. The pros of the Hada technique is it's all the same type of steel. The downside is that I then have to make sure I have enough steel in my starting billet to be able to get that parameter for length and width. I am thinking which are the flattest, which are the most similar in size already. Get rid of all the scale, rust, any type of garbage that will inhibit a weld. There's plenty of steel out there for any one of these guys to make an 8 to 10 inch blade. But they're short, fat blades. They're going to have to make a good stack so they can pull it out wide enough. A base of this uh, blade is about 2 inches, 2 and a quarter inches wide. The challenging thing with daggers is getting them symmetric and all four faces of the bevel to be even. That's something I've basically struggled with when I started making them, and it's kind of why I stopped making them. One of the things that's hard when you start doing daggers or symmetrical shape is actually finding that symmetry. A dagger profile is difficult, different from a traditional knife, that you have to shape four identical sides instead of two to get that traditional diamond shape of the dagger. I've made daggers before, but this Peugeot or a hua hua thing. It's wide, it's longer than I normally make. But you know what? I've never run away from the challenge, so let's tear it up. For my stack, I want to have nine pieces or more, so that way when you do 
draw this out, you want to have more metal than you need. Having more is better than not having enough. When you stack a billet, you want to make sure all of them are the same size. If there's any that stick out bigger than the other, you'll get right at the edge there, you'll get this cold shut where it rolls over eventually, and it doesn't make a good weld. I am goal-oriented. Goal one is to make it to round two. Goal two is to get to round three. Goal three is to be Forge and Fire champion. I want to make this billet set up as easy as it can be. So I grab the straightest, most square-looking weapons that I see. I grab four of them just to make sure I have enough steel. My mind's going a mile a minute. I've never made a dagger before. And I just got to get the jitters out, get in my groove, just making another billet like I do every day. Right now, I've got my billet welded up. I've got six separate pieces, about four inches by an inch wide. Got tacked up, heating up. I've still got a few jitters that I got to work out, but I think once I got my billet set, I'm going to be rolling. Double-edged daggers, I have no problem with. I I've made them. But um, the challenge in this weapon is the weapon has to be symmetrical, and then you, you can't be off. The judges will see that. They will know that. If your measurement's off, you can go home. If you don't do your welds right, you can go home. I don't want to go home. I want to be number one. One of the things I love about challenges like this is there's plenty of steel out there. It's just not in the right shape. Yeah. And it's up to them to take those shapes, to forge weld them together, and make a new shape. And that material management, that planning, is everything. Yeah. I hand hammer to set the welds. I prefer to do it by hand because I know I'm swinging it at the right weight, the right speed. Kevin, he, he did start with a nice uniform stack, but it looked to me like an inch and a half cube. A little bit lean on the amount of material for this knife. When I know my forge welds are set, I start drawing the billet out lengthwise. I don't want to push out too much metal at one time. I want to maintain that thickness of the blade because I know the judges are brutal when they test. Hot metal. I don't know if I got enough material. Every time you forge weld, there's always a chance of failure. So every time I forge weld, I'm nervous. My first forge weld is just a nice, light tap to make sure everything's set. And then once I know that weld is set, I can start drawing this billet out. In this competition, I think I have a good advantage in that you know, I'm pretty adept at forging. I've forged probably close to 1,000 knives now in the past three years. But you can never stop learning about knives, and I want to learn until the day I die and make the best knife I can possibly make every day. When you're forge welding, it's a repetitive process. You have to heat, hammer, heat, hammer, so it becomes one solid piece of metal. And when you're forge welding, it's hit as hard as you can, as fast as you can. When you come out of the forge and you can see different colorations in even stacks, I mean, yeah. you know that they're not connected. It's not a good weld. Yeah. Once I get these forges set, then I'll take it to Big Blue. The thing I'm most worried about is my weld's not taking, because those welds don't take. You don't have a billet. You don't have a billet. You don't have a knife. Looking on the inside of the bar, it looks like it's pretty good. There's no cracks I can see. There's no D-lambs. It looks like it's a nice, clean, solid weld. Pat's billet looks a little bit undersized when we talk about that 8 to 10 inch blade, plus tang. Ultimate end for the steel. I'm looking for something that is a little bit longer than the parameters in the initial body. I can then put any extra material that becomes a little bit too large for me to deal with for the blade into the tang, and they can be removed later. Blade Smiths, one hour has elapsed. You have just two hours remaining to finish your work. There goes Mike, working it cold again. I mean, dull red. I think my forge welds are good. So now I need to lengthen my steel. I think that we're going to see some serious problems with those welds. But I actually make the mistake of turning to the side, thinking I can make my tang that way. And it starts to split apart. Oh, man. If I can't fix this, I either got to start over or just go home. I think my forge welds are good. I turn on the side, it starts to split apart. And that's not what you want to see. When Mike set his first weld, it was really cold. I mean, it was a dull red, and you really want a bright white heat. I'm wasting time having to reset the forge welds. Is that something you can't afford to do in a three-hour build? We 
are almost 90 minutes into this first round of competition, and I see a lot of shapes. I don't see any Pugio shapes out there yet. Here's the thing, the Pugio exists in the Roman Empire for 600, 700 years, so there are a lot of variations. That wasp waist is on all of them, but the head tends to vary a bit. I've got the steel drawn out to a long, tapered, pointy object. Uh, I've got it thick enough that I should be able to hand widen that blade out to where I need it. Pat's blade, are you guys seeing a Pugio? I'm not. The very long tip yeah, yeah. from that wasp waist. Very you tall know, wasp. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Width-wise, a little shy on that. I'm actually a quarter inch under. At this point, I'd have to add steel to get more width to the blade, and I don't think I would have enough time. I'm just going to continue on with what I'm doing and squeeze out enough material on both sides to make up the difference, and I should be good to go. It's looking great. I'm trying to shape as much as I can with my hammer. My shape's come along nicely. I'm starting to see that Peugeot-looking thing and get the hips into it, but I don't have enough metal for the tang. I got this piece from one of my weapons, and I'm going to weld this on as my tang. Hot, hot, son of a. Kevin. There you go. Kevin grabbed some more steel. Ah, got me. Kevin made a blade shape and then welded a tang right at that junction between tang and blade. And that's a, that's a weak spot. Right, it's the junction between the business end and the user end. Yeah. Welding a tang onto this knife will create a weak spot, but it's going to meet the parameters. And if I make it to round two, I'll figure out how to reinforce that weak spot. I'm watching Alex right now use the horn of the anvil and a hammer to create that wasp waist. Yeah. So right now, I just finished forging my blade. Next, I'm going to get the profile and knife on the grinders, maybe add a little bit of beveling before heat treat. But I did a lot of it with the forging, so I shouldn't have too much to do on grinding. His profile is spot on. It's feeling really good. It's got a nice weight to it. I think it should do really good in the chop test. Plenty of strength to the tip for a stab, so I'm feeling all right. I don't know the quality of his welds, but Mike has really been able to draw that metal out, and he's got a great Pugio shape. Yeah. OK. My blade's coming together great. I think that my point isn't quite as drastic as some of my competitors, but I think that mine looks more like the example. It's ugly, but it's both. Blade Smiths! 30 minutes remaining in the round. I see that my tang is delaminating at the very end, but I think I have enough steel to cut off that delaminated part of the tang. So my knife's finally ready for heat treat. And one thing I do not want to do is overheat the steel. I just spent so much time forging it. I want to quench this as perfectly as I can. So I'm just moving it back and forth to try and even this heat out. Alex did manage to do a period correct Caesar quench. Caesar quench? Yes, he stabbed that forge 23 <laughs> times, moving it in and out before he went to the oil. My knife's looking pretty straight. It sounds hard, it looks hard. I'm feeling good. Well, this is what I got so far. I'm going to go into the heat treat and then uh, do a little more finish grinding. Kevin just quenched his blade. File testing it. Yeah, that was quick. That was very fast. You got to be kidding me. Half of it's heat treated, half of it's not. That is bad news. On the second heat treat, I bring it up to cherry red. And I got the same problem again. Kevin may be file checking while it's still hot and thinking it didn't get hard. So going for another clint uh, and then another clint. That makes sense. I'm starting to feel the, the pressure. I know I got to get on that grinder to start getting this thing cleaned up. The tip looks very hot. Yeah. Come on, dude. Nope. What the hell's going on? I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. Oh, she's hard now. I'm good. I'm good. Looks like Pat's going to start his uh, heat treat process. Yeah, he's got it in tank first to get the, uh, so he's not overheating the tip. That's good. Looks good and straight. I'm going to take it over to the grinder, finish up my profile. Well, I don't know how Pat's going to a grinder. You can't grind metal onto a blade. The very subtle wasp waist. Like he's making a metal Christmas tree. 
Well, the heat treat slash the quench is what hardens your blade so that when you do chopping or cutting, it'll keep its edge. So I need it to be fully hardened. Perfect. Mike's really bringing it home with this shape, I think. Yeah. 10 seconds. Yeah, not pretty, but it'll work. Five, four, three, two, one. Bladesmith, shut down your machines, drop your tools, stop what you're doing. This first round of bladesmithing competition is over. Yeah, boys. Woo! I feel good about turning my blade in and looking the way it does. I feel like I've hit the parameters. I have a good working knife. All right, Bladesmiths, in this first round of competition, we asked you to produce a Puggio between eight and 10 inches in length. Now the judges want to see what you've done with yourselves. Mike, you're up first. Please present your Puggio to the judges. Well, Mike, the profile is pretty Puggio-esque. There is a wasp waist here. There's a nice flare front and back. Um, yeah, it's a good looking blade. All right, Kevin, you're up. Please present your blade to the judges. I like the fact you've got the waist here. I like the fact you've got the pronounced shoulders here. You know, that tip meandering over. It's hard to get my eyes around that hard lean. Where you did weld on this added tang, I can see the top edge of that weld. You've kind of built in a questionable spot. So I would do everything you can to reinforce that area if you're moving forward. Roger that. Alex, you're up next. Please present your blade to the judges. Well, Alex, this is a really good Puggio shape. You captured the essence of the knife very well. The only thing that gives me pause is that there's not a lot of tang here. It's right to the end of my hand. So if you're going to put pommel on it or anything like that, it's going to need to be extended somehow. But other than that, well done. Thank you. Pat. Unfortunately, the judges won't be evaluating your work because your blade failed to meet parameters. It is an inch and seven eighths at the base and falls short of our two inch minimum requirement. And for that reason, I'd like to ask you to please surrender your blade. A little disappointed, but I gave it the best try I could for the time I had. My blade was under parameters on the shoulders. I even tried to rewiden it. And when I was doing my final grinding, I must have just taken a little bit more off the edge than I really thought but I'm planning on making a Puggio when I get home but because it bothers me that I missed the mark on daggers and now I'm obsessed with trying to figure out how to do it the right way. Bladesmiths, congratulations. You guys have made it into the second round of this competition. And now that those blades have been tempered, it's time to make them fully functional Puggios by attaching handles to them and correcting the deficiencies from the first round. In addition to a handle, you must have a medallion in the handle, you must have a guard, and you must have a pummel. Failure to do so means immediate dismissal from this forge with no deliberation. You'll have just two hours in which to complete all this work. After this round, your blades will be tested for strength and durability in a shield stab and slice, and for edge retention in a rope slice. Good luck, bladesmiths. Your two hours starts now. OK, so these guys have just two hours to attach these handles with medallions, with disc pummels, and with guards. You know, it's funny, the medallion is going to be the weirdest little trip up, because it's either going to be really easy. You make one out of sheet, you stick it on either side, and you're done. Or you make a more solid one, like the example is, now you have some fiddly fitting up of the handle material to get it all to sit up right. All right. Yeah. So I made it to round two, check. Now I need to bring the tip back to the center of the blade. If I was going to take out Caesar with a crooked blade, I'd be the embarrassment of the entire Roman Empire. So I got to have a straight blade. I'm grinding off the one edge of the blade until that tip slowly moves back to the center. I do see a lot of good sparks in there. So he's really grinding in there, hopefully just one side to match the other. So I'm feeling OK about my blade, but there's so much handle work to do that it's just insane trying to do it in two hours. First thing I'm doing is laying out my handle materials to see how much tang I need to add on. Alex's tang was short, 
So he's over there dropping bees like it's Mardi Gras. <laughs> Alex has taken a very hot weld and quenched that weld in water. No. Oh, yeah. I know not to do that. Welding something with the heat that you're in, cooling it off with water, you don't make it hard and brittle, and they break. No, there we go. I'm so excited to be in round two. But uh, I got 10 hours of the work I got to do in two hours. I don't know. There it is. I need to put a guard on. I'm going with a thin piece of brass. The guard in the pummel. Should it be made out of brass or bronze? I think brass or bronze would have been uh, would have been correct for the period. I would probably go with that. And it's easier to, to file and fit up. All right. Not beautiful, but it works. Blade Smiths, one hour has elapsed. You have just one hour remaining to finish your work. Fixing the tip put me way behind. The plan is to get a block of brass and plunge a hole down the middle of it so that the tang snugly fit into it to reinforce that weak weld point when I welded on the tang. So close, so close. Oh, mother of pearl. I get the guard somewhat firmly attached, then I move on to the medallion and the pommel. I cut off four pieces of this brass round stock, and I'm gonna use two pieces for my pommel and two pieces for my medallion. Sexy is not what I'm going for right now. But then again, you got this. I've got my guard fitted up, and I'm going to start building this handle. I need to get the top piece of wood, the medallion, the bottom piece of wood, and the pommel fitted up before I can even glue and start grinding. If I get these pieces fitted up, and I just really need to get these holes drilled so I can pin my medallion, lock my handle up, and then get it ground. OK, that not work. <laughs> He's drilling all, all of his layers all in one shot? Or? Yeah. I can feel the drill bit start to move through the steel. Alex is working with some really big drill bits. Hopefully, he hasn't thinned out his handle material so enough that it's going to be weak. Right. Oh! I push a little bit harder, and the tang that I welded on breaks off. His tang that he welded on, that extension, snapped. This is the worst thing I could imagine happening right now. So I start drilling, and the tang that I welded on breaks off. 30 minutes, Blade Smiths! Luckily, my epoxy hasn't fully cured yet, so I pull off that second piece and rush over to the welder and try and tack this tang back on. It's unfortunate Alex did that final weld and then quenched it. You know, that makes for a really brittle area. I'm freaking out that I'm not actually going to be able to finish a knife. Are you kidding me? So as I'm grinding it out, I find a small hole in my wood handle. Look at that. So I fill with epoxy. I'm filling holes. I'm covering the handle. Whatever it is, it is now an epoxy handled knife. It's dripping epoxy off of it. It's, it's like dripping. oozing off but that's the just blade. It. You can't fill a hole with epoxy and then let it sit sideways. The epoxy will run out of the yeah. hole. These medallions are killing me. Time's ticking away. I still got to throw a uh, handle onto it. Kevin's handle's literally just the metal pieces. I grab some deer leather, and I start cutting strips of it, and I just start slapping glue on it and stretching it and wrapping it, stretching it and wrapping it. There's a workaround, a leather wrap tank. Right. Because Perfect. that is genius. <laughs> this is what he did right there. I love it. I'm edge on this real fast. I got five minutes for the glue to set up, so I start getting on the grinder to put an edge on this thing. Has Mike put any medallions on his handle yet? I don't know. I need to attach my medallions. Ah! I can do this with the larger piece of brass that I use for the pummel. As I try and cut it, it doesn't work out. I have to scrap the idea and do something else. Let's do it. I don't have time to make it a perfect replica. I'm doing what I have to to make it a functional knife that represents what they want. I'll buy some really big pin stock, and it'll be a smaller medallion. The normal construction with this medallion, sliding it over okay. so there's a round medallion in the middle, just like this. OK. Or you can do with two-piece construction like this, sandwiching. As long as visually that medallion exists as a palm slot. 
Yeah. It's just a matter of sizing that properly. Five minutes, Blade Smith! Alex set himself back with this crappy weld that he dipped in the water. His tang snapped off. He's had to re-weld it back on. Now he's scrambling, and you can see that he's a little bit flustered. I don't even know what to focus on. I've got to get this handle shaped down to at least something you can hold. And I haven't even touched my blade yet. I have to cut a few corners and do as much as I possibly can to try and finish this blade. Five, four, three, two, one. Blade Smith, shut down your machines, drop your tools. This second round of competition is over. Uh, I'm not feeling super great. I barely have an edge on my knife, and my handle is still super rough. And that was one of the craziest challenges I've ever had in knife making. Blade Smith, welcome to the strength test, the old shield stab and chop. To test the strength and durability of your edges and points on your Pugios, as well as their overall construction, I'll be chopping and stabbing mercilessly into these shields. I don't really care what happens to the shields in this. I want to see what happens to your tip and your edges. Alex, you're up first. You ready? Let's do it. All right. I'm super nervous going into testing. I'm not sure how my tang is going to hold up after I just re-welded it. My tip is thin, so I'm just really hoping that it can hold up. I am super nervous. I'm trying to calm myself down because there's nothing I can do at this point, but my heart starts pounding. Well, Alex, first things first, you lost about a quarter inch of your tip here. Um, I'm looking at the grain in there, and it's, it's not as fine as I'd like to see. It's probably overheating during the normalizations or quenches. That aside, you left some sharp corners of the wood right here, where the wood contacts the brass, and it took a little, little nibble out of my, my thumb right here. But in total, it's got a good classic Pugio shape, and your edge held up really well. Kevin. Let's rock it, man. All right, let's do it. <laughs> I'm a little anxious to see how my knife is going to perform. One or two things are going to happen. Either that shield's going to give, or my blade's going to snap. All right, Kevin, first things first, the tip came off. Again, this grain is bigger than I like. You also lost a piece of your edge right here. There's a nibble out of it. We can go to your handle construction here. Don't call my baby ugly. <laughs> oh, no, sir. <laughs> Look, you were under a time crunch. You chose a method of completing this challenge in a way that's usable and wieldable. Well done. I'm down with it. Mike, you're up next. What are you thinking? Let's do it. All right. I haven't been nervous until right now, and I'm going crazy. My competitors both lost their tips. If I can keep my tip on, I don't have any problems. But this is out of my control. This is in the judge's hands. That's not a medallion, man. That's a pin. That's a big pin, no different than these pins. Mike. Your blade doesn't have medallions on either side of that handle, and it is a critical feature in a Pugio. And therefore, your blade cannot be tested or measured evenly and fairly with your competitors, and it doesn't make the cut. You did a lot of hard work here, my friend, and it's an unfortunate circumstance. But at this time, I have to ask you to please leave the forge. Good job, guys. 
If you're gonna come to this competition, make sure you pay attention to the parameters. It's very important. The smallest little detail that you miss can get you off. This was an amazing experience. I truly believe that if I had my weapon tested, I would have went through to the finals. What's next for me is go home and I'll probably make another Pugio and I'm gonna send a picture to the judges and say, this is what I made. Alex, Kevin, congratulations. You guys are in the third and final round of this competition, which means that you're both one step closer to the title of Forge Fire Champion and a check for $10,000. All you need to do now is go home and recreate this iconic weapon from history. The Spada. The Spatha was a vicious sword given to infantry during the Roman Empire. The double-edged weapon was used to inflict deep slashes and deadly cuts on their enemies while the tapered tip was effective for thrusting. In the third and fourth century, some of these Roman soldiers turned sides and became barbarians. They then used the Spatha in wars against the Roman Empire and eventually led to its demise. Ancient Rome continues to be the backdrop for blockbuster films like Gladiator, in which the Spatha can be seen wielded in battle. Gentlemen, your final challenge is to forge a spatha. Your blades must be between 27 and 29 inches in length. They must have a medial ridge on both sides of the blade, and it must be double-edged. It must have a wooden guard and a disc pommel. You'll have just four days at your home forges in which to complete this weapon. After your judges have thoroughly tested your blades, they'll declare one of you the Forge and Fire champion who walks out of here with that check for $10,000. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in four days. Good luck, Kevin. So it's day one in Belleville, West Virginia. I got a spot to go make. Let's get crack a lacking. Woo! I'm going to be using 5160. It's a forgiving medium. It'll bring some strength to whatever they're going to smash, cut, break, kill. So I'm going to try Big Sexy first to bash down the width of that material to about two and a half, two and a quarter inches wide. Come on, dang it. Work. Four days is it enough time to make a spatha. You don't know what the complication is going to be. Oh, she's getting there, though. I slowly started drawing it out. I'm about 35 inches long. You know, it's just patience, getting the equipment to work right. Tomorrow, crush will be on, because uh, I ain't got to get this thing quenched. If I don't, I'm behind the ball. Woo! Definitely excited to be back home, back in my shop where I'm nice and comfortable. I'm going to do a uh, full Damascus blade with a little bit of a ladder pattern in it. I'm really looking forward to going all out and making something really cool to impress the judges. First press was just nice and quick and light, just to push everything together. Now this next press will be a little more aggressive. Probably the most important part of this entire build. My weld seemed to have stuck pretty well. I'm going to start drawing this thing out. One seam that came apart. I think if I just flux it, get it hot, and press it again, should be okay. Let's hope. This might be a make or break moment right here. I really hope that's the only one, but deep down, I'm petrified that there's gonna be more of these seams opening up throughout this billet. Right there, I can see it's coming apart. Trying to figure out what we're gonna do. As I go to start drawing this billet out, a big seam just opens up right in the center of my billet. So I think my best bet is going to be to break this billet in half, salvage as much welded steel as I possibly can, and I'll just do a generic random pattern Damascus, but it'll still be a Damascus sword. Well, the good news is both of those seem really solid, so we least got something out of today. Today, I need to get the blade done and quenched. So I got the shoulders put in. I have the medial ridge where you can distinctly see where it's starting to come together. It's time for the quench. Oh, f Yeah, look at that Then We're quenching again, because I don't have time to F around with a normalization, because I went all the way down to the bottom, and I felt it bend. 
I gotta go through all the steps all over again. Still got that bend. I'm gonna temper overnight, and in that process, it'll start to hopefully normalize down. It's hit or miss. It's either gonna go well, <laughs> or it's gonna go wrong. And, and yeah, it, it went wrong today. It's morning of day two. Definitely had some setbacks yesterday. Starting the day with my bills tacked up and ready for forge welding, and hoping to end the day with a quenched and hardened spatha. First press. Looks okay so far, but I'm still gonna be really careful. I've got my billet drawn out pretty close to shape. I have just enough length here. Uh, you can see I'm kind of forging in that medial ridge already. This is the longest blade I have ever attempted to quench. I pull the blade out of the oil. At the end of the day, I have an intact Damascus blade. So first thing tomorrow, I'm gonna get my blade etched and the handle prepared. And Looking forward to a good day. I'm feeling better than last night because uh, I got the blade tempered and got it straight. Still behind the ball. I'm going to start to fit up the handle, start looking at different parts and what I think looks well. So my design plan for this pommel is I'm going to take the two ends of the deer antler and I'm going to carve a lion's head out of them. Hand carving anything is time consuming, so I can't get lost in my head. I'll set it in on top of glow-in-the-dark resin, and then I'll fill that in with a clear epoxy. I'm not walking in there with something plain. Tomorrow, I'm gonna put some bronze metal stain on the blade, and I'm gonna finish this no matter what. It'll be done. Started day four. The fatigue of the past couple of days is definitely starting to set in. The blade's been etching the coffee overnight to really bring out the contrast. Yeah, it really darkened up that 1084. So this spot that needs to have a wooden guard and a disc-shaped pommel. So I'm going to do a stacked handle. I'm using ironwood for the guard and the pommel because it's super strong. And then I'm going to use black wood for the main part of the handle. I've got all my individual pieces of this handle fitted up nice and tight. I've got to get this blade sharpened. And I've never sharpened anything this long before, but I know how to put an edge on a knife. I cannot wait to see this thing put to the test. Blade Smiths, welcome back to the forge. You fellas have had four days at your home forges to work on your finale spot. This. Alex, how did it go? I definitely managed to find my fair share of challenges, but it went pretty well. My blade is about a 50 layer Damascus steel out of SK5 and 15N20 with a wrought iron guard and pommel inset. And I've got ironwood garden pommel with a blackwood handle. Kevin, tell us a little bit about your blade. I made a blade out of 5160, and I made a palm out of brass sandwiched with rosewood. And then I used uh, tagua nuts to make it look like ivory, and then bronze stained sword itself. Nice. That's why it's got that red appearance. It does. All right. To determine which one of you is our next Forge and Fire champion, we'll put your blades through three tests. There will be a strength test, a sharpness test, and up first, the kill test. Doug? All right, Bladesmiths, your Spatha swords look amazing. It's time to find out what kind of lethal damage they can do. To do that, I will take your weapon, deliver some killing slashes and blows on this. More than willing, ballistics dummy. Alex, you're up first. You ready for this? Let's do it. Let's do it. As soon as I finished this blade, I was content knowing whatever was going to happen was going to happen. But now that I'm here standing in front of the dummy and Doug's got my sword, I'm starting to get a little jittery. starting to get a little jittery. Yeah, I'm uh, a little nervous to see what this blade does.
All right, Alex. First up, I can really appreciate the beauty that you have with your Damascus pattern right there. It really stands out. Very clean lines. The medial ridge you have on here, I can imagine well, how much work that takes to get it almost perfectly straight all the way through to the tip. Your tip is sharp enough to penetrate with the thrust and lacerate on the way out. And most importantly, it will keel. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. All right, Kevin, it's your turn. So you ready? Hell yeah. Let's do this. Alex's uh, Spatha just destroyed that uh, blow six dummy. And now I'm feeling anxious, excited. So I got the adrenaline going. Right, so. No medial ridge on either side of the blade. It's one of the parameters. Right. Kevin, your blade must fall within our parameters in order to be tested evenly and fairly with your competitors. Your blade does not have a central ridge that was a parameter that was outlined before we ever sent you home. And for that reason, you cannot be the Forged and Fire champion. Come on, my friend. You know, it's just a bummer I can't see it test. That's what I really want to see. I want to see how it holds up. Nice work on that head. Thank you. I appreciate it. When I was making it, it, it had the defined ridge in it. Just with the sanding and grinding, it just took more of it off. But uh, this whole experience has been a blast. Congratulations. This isn't a loss. I'm coming home with a $10,000 experience. Alex, you made a sharp and deadly spatha, but not only that, you made something that is detailed and beautiful. And your attention to detail has elevated you to the title of Forged and Fire champion. Congratulations. Your title comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. This is pretty wild. I came here to challenge myself and put myself through a super rigorous test, and I came out on top, and it feels great. This $10,000, I'm actually gonna give it all straight to my parents. They supported me through college as I was learning bladesmithing, and they're both getting ready to retire, so uh, this is all going to them. 